But right guys, before this review kicks off, a little update in terms of retro gaming reviews on this channel. In terms of retro gaming reviews on this channel, ho ho ho! But I've got news for you guys. The Retro OS team at Disable Gaming Reviews can formally announce that we now have the capability to play yet another classic format of games on native Nintendo hardware. What is this piece of classic gaming hardware you ask? Well everyone, take a look at this. you didn't know what this is, this little piece of gaming hardware is a Nintendo DS Lite. Not only is this little system capable of playing Nintendo DS games, it also plays Game Boy Advance games. Now, the Game Boy Advance was released in 2001, which was the world's first 32-bit handheld gaming console. This console had a wide variety of classics in its game library, such as Pokemon Ruby or Sapphire, The Legend of Zelda and the Minish Cap, and Mario Kart Super Circuit, and Metroid Fusion to name a few. With this big retro gaming announcement aside, let's get into the very first Game Boy Advance review. Hey everyone, Spartan Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disable Game Reviews here. Welcome to the most emotional episode of Retro OS I have ever done on this channel. This time a review of Game Boy Advance Classic that was released one month, you had that right guys, one month before my accident in 2004. Does this game live up to the accolade? Well without further ado, let's find out. Once again guys, grab a nice comfy seat, it's time for story time. When we're browsing around Glasgow, particularly looking through the charity shops, because you know, I work in one, I noticed something in the display case and the British Heart Foundation located in Union Street. Of course, that was this little piece of retro hardware for the ultra low price of £35. The console itself was in near pristine condition with charger and carry case included. I have been looking for a portable Nintendo console which has the capability of playing Game Boy Advance games for over a decade. Of course, I ordered this game from CEX for the low price of £12. I will explain why later in the review. Anyway, back to the review at hand. The Sonic Advance series has been hailed as one of the best Sonic games on handheld systems. No matter how old this title is, the community still has a soft spot for this title in our hearts. The game takes place after the event of Sonic Battle, a game for the Game Boy Advance. Our long-time antagonist Dr. Eggman and his new robotic assistant Jim Errol attempt an experiment to perform Shadow's trademark chaos control ability. The experiment went sour and the world is split apart. It is up to Sonic and the gang to restore the planet piece by piece. And the access ability scores are as follows. Right to kick things off, this ability gave it 10. Although there are no colorblind modes in this game due to the game's age, but there is very little need for one. There are no color coded elements that can cause an issue for a colorblind player. On ability, I also give a 10. There is no spoken dialogue in this game, again due to the game's age. All dialogue is text-based. Back in those days, imaginations had to fill in the blanks. Next up, mobility, I give a 10.5. The button layers can be fully customized within the game's options menu. That way, you can pick whatever button layout is suitable for your impairment. So our player with a mobility impairment will be able to play this game with no issues. Gameplay is scored a 9.5. A large part of the Sonic community holds this game in very high regard. When I play this game earlier on this month, I can clearly see why. This is what a 2D Sonic game should play like. The game's tag system is what makes this game truly unique. Instead of picking a single character, you have to pick a team of two. 
Each character has their own unique tag ability. For example, Tails can boost characters high in the air and of course flying. The only criticism that I have of this game is the level layouts are a bit complex, but the aforementioned tag mechanic more than makes up for it. Since I have lost my original copy of this game back in 2005, I've been waiting longer than the period between the releases of Half-Life 2 Episode 2 and Half-Life Alex to play this game on native Nintendo hardware, until of course my very lucky charity shop find. When this game arrives days before my birthday it was so nostalgic. I was inches away from tears when I first played it in over a decade. Again, no joking. In summary, Sonic Advance 3 is a solid addition to the Sonic franchise. The aforementioned tag mechanic makes exploring levels fun, as you find the right path to clear a level as fast as possible. So if you happen to own a Game Boy Advance and looking for a platformer to play, this game is highly recommended. And the overall score is a perfect 100%, kicking off Game Boy Advance reviews in the best way possible. This is Frosty Commander 1980 Chief Editor of Disabling Game Reviews signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review.